Welcome to the The Generation Podcast, an audio resource dedicated to a generation of young people who are committed to total surrender to God and total dependence on His power to reach the world with the gospel of Christ. This podcast is designed to strengthen and encourage through a series of Bible-based practical talks. Your Heavenly Father knows what's best for you, but sometimes we force Him to prove that the hard way. In today's podcast, we are pleased to host a youth pastor who describes the crisis that led him to surrender, one that nearly paralyzed him. Welcome to the The Generation Podcast. This is Jim Van Gelderen, and today I am podcasting or broadcasting, whichever you say, from Pleasantville, Iowa. We are right now in the middle of the War Special Forces. Last night we had our first night. We had about 35 young people here. I think about uh, uh, four stepped out in for salvation. One may have been assurance, but several good decisions last night. We were encouraged by that, and uh, we're uh, glad to be here. Next week, we'll be heading way out west, and uh, this tour will have some meetings out west, some in the Midwest. I won't go into all the reason why, but obviously these are unusual times, and it has affected our itinerary, but we are looking to God to lead us in a special way. Well, as a result of being just a couple of weeks ago in Terre Haute, Indiana, we came across a wonderful church there, Bible Baptist Church, uh, pastored by uh, Kevin Schwarga, a little sidelight. I have never met a Brother Schwarga before, but I did know his father years ago, decades ago, and he was about my, my age as a teenager, then into college. We kind of knew each other then, and then his mother went to a Christian school that I went to, so it was kind of neat uh, to see his heart for God, work with him there in the Christian school and the local church. Certainly God's doing something at Bible Baptist Church. We were thrilled to be there. But while there, we met the youth director, Brother Avery Barney, and uh, he was a delight to work with, had a heart for God. And today I wanted you to hear from Brother Avery and hear his testimony. Uh, Someone who, a big guy, and you could see it when you talk to him, he was a football player, but he's got a story how God got a hold of his heart. I want you to hear that today, and I know it'll be an encouragement to you and stir you that God is still working, calling, uh, working in young people's hearts. He may be doing it in yours. Maybe this testimony will touch your heart. So I trust it'll be a blessing to you, Brother Avery. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for having me on the podcast today. Um, We had our War Special Forces here at our church and it was the first time that we've ever had it, but it was amazing. God really worked uh, through it. We saw uh, we saw a lot of teens that had been coming to our Christian school. Uh, I think we had a couple of them get saved. We had a lot of them surrender their life. We had a lot of them do that. And I think that was kind of the common the commonality this week uh, at the War Special Forces uh, was surrendering, and uh, that's something that I always struggled with as a teenager. I got saved. Um, when I was almost 16 years old, and uh, I was playing football at the time, and even into that, my junior year of high school, I was playing football, and uh, I had made a deal with God, and I had told him, if you let me play football now, you let me go to college and play football in college, uh, I, I had started talking to some scouts and things like that about scholarship opportunities and, and furthering my education, um, but I knew that God wanted me to go to Bible college, and I knew that God wanted me to preach. And uh, But I made that deal with God, and I told him, God, if you will allow me to live my life now, I will live my life for you later. And um, that's not what God wanted. God wanted me to be in the ministry. God wanted me to do, uh, or God wanted me to preach. And uh, But I made that deal with God, and it wasn't very long later, I was out playing football, uh, I was uh, I was playing linebacker at the time, and uh, I blitzed. Uh, if any of you know the football terms, there there are gaps in the line, uh, and I blitzed the three gap, uh, which is where the running back was coming through, and I hit him. But my teammate, who was running from the side of the field, uh, also tried to hit him, and he he sandwiched my helmet in between the other player's helmet, and uh, it gave me a concussion. And when I hit the ground. Um, I couldn't I couldn't move my legs. Uh, I it was very it was a very scary experience for me. And and as I was laying there on the ground, my coaches ran out and held me on the ground because I was kind of freaking out. And um, my mom came out on the field and she's a nurse. She secured my head and everything. And I honestly believe that my lack of surrender was the reason that this happened. And I remember as I was as I got off the field, they took me away in an ambulance. Um, when I got to the hospital, 
I remember thinking to myself, God, why are you doing this? Why are you taking this away from me? But the reality was it was my lack of surrender. And um, so uh, I made it through that, and I decided, you know, I'm still, I'm still going to play football. Uh, I regained the feeling in my legs. And, and then uh, in the course of that year, uh, I had two more concussions from playing football. And uh, the sports doctor that I was going to told me, he said, Avery, you're never playing football again. And uh, so God, God took that away. Um, and I, I deal with some long-term consequences because I, I had a lack of surrender. Because, because I didn't do what God wanted me to do. Uh, you know, sometimes my hands and feet go numb. Sometimes my head hurt, or sometimes I get migraines. And, and um, you know, I guess I, I say all that to say this. I saw a commonality this week in surrendering, in, in surrendering your life to God. And sometimes there are consequences if we don't surrender. Sometimes there are things that, that we have to face that are extra when we don't just surrender to God's will. You know, God loves you, and God, God doesn't have any ill will for you. There's no lack of love for you. There's no, um, he's, not, he's not thinking to himself, well, I want to send this person to Africa so they can be miserable. He's not thinking, I want this person to be a youth pastor so they can go crazy. He loves you, and he wants to put you somewhere where you can be effective for him. And when you surrender to him, I promise you, you're going to be much happier surrendering than you would ever be doing your own will. Uh, you know, there are a lot of dreams in my life, but it's amazing when we get this thing down of surrender, how all of a sudden our will becomes God's will, or God's will becomes our will, more or less, actually. Um, you know, I never thought that I was going to be in Terre Haute, Indiana, being a youth pastor. I never thought I was going to be at a war of special forces or, or anything like that, but but God worked that out, and God God used it, and I'm so thankful that I listened to God. I'm so thankful that I didn't just say, nope, I'm going to keep doing what I feel like I want to do and, and all these things because my life has been amazing. Um, you know, surrendering to God, uh, let me find my wife. Surrendering to God, you know, now I have uh, three children and, and God's just done wonderful things in my life. You know, the, the, the teenagers I've been able to see saved. Um, you know, God, God has just done wonderful things in my life because I, because I surrendered to him. And uh, my friend, as I sit here this morning, I make you the promise that if you surrender to God, you're, you're, it's, I don't want to say, it. if you surrender to God, your life will have meaning. You know what, in reality, what was football going to get me? It might have me through college, but does that give me meaning in my life? Does that give fulfillment? What I do, what, what we do for eternity is what brings that fulfillment. And so let me encourage you, young people, if you're listening to this, you might be struggling, thinking, well, I've got a lot of desires. I've got a lot of dreams for myself. I've got a lot of things that I want to do. Well, just make sure that lines up with what God wants you to do, because you'll be a lot happier doing what God wants you to do than doing what you want to do and not having a relationship with Christ. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this episode of the The Generation Podcast. For more faith-inspiring resources and information about joining The Generation, please visit thegeneration.org. That's T-H-E-E generation.org.